Blog Talk Radio. Archangels, ghosts, and Bigfoot, oh my. It's just another night for Supernatural Girls. Real stories, real answers to life's biggest supernatural mysteries. And now, for another exciting interview with paranormal experts from this world and others. Here's your host, paranormal researcher Patricia Baker, on the one, the only, Supernatural Girl. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of Supernatural Girls Radio. I am your host, Patricia Baker, and I'm here with my co-host, PK Roasting in Tucson. How you doing, PK? I'm just about ready to get off the spit. <laughs> I've been turned around more times than I'd like to think about with this heat. Good oh, God. my God. What is it, 107? Oh, well. Yeah, well, it's been hot as Hades. It's uh, I think Hades would be better because at least there wouldn't be humidity. That's <laughs> right. That's humidity right. The lack of rain. It's threatening, but it's not coming yet. Uh, well, here we are, July 17th, 2019. Uh, and we have a wonderful show because you all demanded that we have Daryl Sims back, the alien hunter. So he was kind enough to say yes. He's back with us tonight for a two-hour show. If you have questions for him, make sure you call in 563-999-3539, 563-999-3539. So first, we got to check numbers, PK. What's happening? It's a nine-day wrapping up a lot of old things, but we're still doing the tail part of that retrograde, which is still bothering numerous people. All we can do is hang on to the side of the ship. Let's sail with it and hope to God that it gets better within the next few days. But there are a lot of things taking place because this today is, is a one universal day. Uh, uh, actually, it's about ending the thing. So we're getting ready for the one day to start tomorrow. But I thought it would be kind of interesting to take a look at how these things were manifesting. There is so much taking place right now. People don't know where to start and where to stop. Electronics, people are going crazy between things breaking down, not starting Cars don't start. Something's happening here. It's been continual. I'm getting phone calls. Could this be the retrograde? Yeah, I think it could. Don't throw <laughs> anything away. Just put it aside. Once the retrograde is over, try it again. The odds are it probably will work just fine then. But no guarantees. Anything to do with communication, whether it be written or via phones, etc., are subject to getting screwed up, messed up, and people are really getting a little scared because some of the things popping out of people's mouths, gee, I think uh, our president just did that, but it's happening to everybody in different ways. So the best thing to do is speak softly, keep it low key, and pray to God that it doesn't come out in a negative splash like we've just had to deal with. Other than that, life is good. All right. It is good. It definitely is good. We've got lots of weird stuff going on, that's for sure, all over the world. And we're going to be talking about a lot of it tonight with Daryl because he is so well-versed in in all of these topics, especially to do with UFOs, aliens, and abductions. And he's going to fill us in on everything. He's been all over the news lately, mainly because of the Area 51 thing. We're going to talk to him about that right off the bat. But first, I just want to remind everybody, go to our Facebook page because we've got some great stories there, some great videos. There's a story about scientists attempting to open portals to a parallel universe. Mm -hmm. So take a look at that. There's been a lot of chat about that. Of course, people have been watching Stranger Things. They know about portals now from that side of the media. But it's, uh, it's something we've talked about. A lot on our show. Patrice Chaplin, one of the all-time great authors, has written about it extensively, and she's taken to people to Girona, Spain, where apparently there is a natural portal there. People have gone through it and come back very, very transformed. 
And as you know, we've been uh, watching the missing 411 uh, disappearances, which are so troubling. And Amy and I uh, have been working on this. So lately, we just started it up again. George is going to be joining us, the the, um, Skype Skull Project. And we had quite an adventure last night when we went looking for Stacey Aris. I'll be reporting on that in a blog shortly. But anyways, make sure you like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media. And also, do you have a supernatural story to tell? Send it to us, and maybe you'll be on the show. So our website for PK, you can find her at SupernaturalGirls.com and PatriciaKirkman.com. You can find me at SupernaturalGirls.com. PK has her numerology to offer you, a wonderful gift for you or anybody you know who wants to be forewarned, forearmed. And I'm doing soul realignment and a manifestation plan for anybody who's interested in learning about how they manifest. Everybody's different. Everybody does it differently. So don't get caught up in a one-size-fits-all manifestation. There are many different ways, and everybody's different. So this work gives you the plan that you need. So, my gosh, we've got so much going on. Such a crazy thing in the world today. People saying there'll be disclosure. Other people saying there won't be disclosure. So, PK, what do you say? Is there going to be disclosure or not? Oh, I think we're going to be in for some surprises before the next month is out. And, you know, it's scary because we know it's coming. People are trying to act like it isn't going to happen. But you know what? There's no special thing that is going to get away with anything now. Specialties are no longer the, the name of the game. It's fact. We've got facts coming at us from so many different directions. We just can't let them slide by anymore. Too many places, oh. too many spaces. Yeah, we got to... Oops, did you disappear? No. Okay, I hope I didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. I still hear you. I was, I, I okay. did a quick... Was a, was a dead spot was... for a second, so I got nervous because we've been having very violent storms all afternoon. So well, we're if I for disappear... Yep. So okay. we're just going to well, have to hold on. Care, I don't know I... here calling for a storm coming, but who knows? Okay. Well, we're in the middle of it right now, so hopefully we'll I'll stay on the air. If not, you can pick it up for me, and I'll get back on when I can. It's a very exciting night tonight. And, of course, as oh. mentioned, we have the alien hunter with us tonight. This is part two of an interview we started a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yes, Daryl Sims, the great. alien hunter. He's back. He's back by popular demand. So, again, if you have a question for him, now's the time to ask him. You can call in at 563-999-3539, 563-999-3539. So, you know, Daryl, he's amazing. He approaches these alien abductions, implants, all of these stories, just like it's all a crime scene, because he knows what he's doing. He worked for mm-hmm. the CIA. He was a detective. He's got it all covered from a law enforcement side. And from an alphabet agency side, I think he knows a lot more than he can tell us. But tonight, he's coming to talk to us about all Mm -hmm. of these exciting things. People say they're going to storm Area 51. Well, we're going to find out about that. Daryl Sims, welcome to the show. Hello, ladies. How are you? We're great. We're so happy to have you here. Well, it's good to be here. I'll tell you, that's a... You know, talking about out, out of place, my wife tells me that all the time. Says, you've been doing it for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I we guess my number's up with her. <laughs> yeah, you better watch out. I think she I knows know. you very well. <laughs> <laughs> Such a detailed individual, which makes it even more fascinating to watch yeah. how you go about these things. It's just incredible how thorough you are at everything that you put together. You, it's almost like we're there with you. Well, this should be an interesting night for sure. There's a lot of lot of interesting things to discuss. 
Well, you've been quoted in international newspapers about this Area 51, let's storm Area 51 kind of craziness. So, Daryl, talk to us about that. What are your thoughts on all of this? I know you've been quoted in the newspapers, but give us the straight story. What's this about? Well, uh, there were some people that decided to pretty much just make up a, a thing, you know, like let's all storm Area 51. And it went viral. <laughs> and now they got a couple hundred thousand people talking. Of course, I got doubt that there are a couple hundred thousand people going to show up, but they've got uh, groups of people that would definitely show up to do that. And um, that's generally speaking a very bad idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to work at a top secret installation. Uh, you're not going to get anywhere with that. If you think you're first of all going to drive up there, Cross about 100 miles of a desert and just roll into Area 51 and, and just storm the place, you have got some other thoughts coming. First of all, <laughs> I, don't think they'll, uh, I don't think they'll make it down the highway very far. I think State Highway Patrol of Nevada will stop them and uh, turn them around unless they have business mm-hmm. that they can prove going a particular direction. But uh, the idea of 100,000 cars rolling down the road uh, up there, that's just not going to happen. It's not, they're not going to allow it. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And oh, there are other reasons, too. They, 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 first of all, the, the intelligence community doesn't want uh, a confrontation. They don't want any. They don't. They want it to all go away, and the best way to do that is just turn it over to Highway Patrol and let them deal with it. Uh, and they'll simply turn traffic around, in my opinion. And that'll be the end of that. And if, in other words, you can sit out there if you want to uh, for a day or two out in that hot sun and it's freezing nights and uh, see how you like it. But probably after you run out of water and gas, you're probably going to mm-hmm. think that's probably a pretty bad idea and it's time to go home. <laughs> yeah, sure. But, but they better you, bring their ditty bag with them. <laughs> yeah. You know what's really interesting about how this took off is the number of people who signed on for this. I'm sure you're right. It's not going to come to fruition. But it does show a level of interest that we really haven't seen before. People are getting more and more interested in this topic and in what the government is hiding from us. So that part I find interesting. How about well, you? Well, I, I, I think you're right. And and I, I think that two things, uh, the, the, the positive part of it is simply – Let's keep the pressure on the government to do something positive. If if the if, if any government, whether it's Republican, Democrat, or whatever it is, if they realize that this thing is a really hot subject and it's really good politically, you're going to see a lot more activity. So if mm-hmm. everybody keeps the pressure up, that'll be good. But the idea of storming um, top figure installations that's that's a recipe for it's not going to work, and even if you did get up there and let's say people, I mean, got to the gate, so to speak, and decided, well, we'll just lean on the fence. And I mean, they're uh, one of the one of my jobs in the uh, military police was riot control. I quelled three riots at one time in Korea, and uh, got a. a, a, a a verbal uh, commendation for it because no in, nobody got injured, no one got hurt on either side, either the police or the uh, the military people or Koreans. Nobody got hurt, and that was that was really a, a real, really good thing. But I can assure you, if things had gotten way out of control, uh, there are measures that can be taken to uh, quell a riot fairly easily. And uh, that's just uh, uh, it, 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 nobody wants to see anything like that, and it's in in all likelihood will not happen. So the idea of storming a place is is a bad idea. The idea of putting the government to the task and having them come forward and talk about some of the things that can be talked about that are not necessarily uh, classified top secret stuff that's going to get us all in a lot of trouble. Uh, I don't have any problem with that. I'm I'm for it. But storming the front gate of a of a secret installation is not going to get you anything but some bad press. 
Yes, and possibly some jail time and other things like that that are not a good thing. That can so, happen. Yeah, but but again, there, from the publicity side, it is fascinating to see the amount of people involved and saying and giving their kind of waving their hands, saying yes, we want to know what's going on. So at least that's the upside of it. But you're right; it just seems dangerous and silly to to actually try to pull that off. Well, if they thought about this a little bit, they, they might look at it a little differently. Uh, there's a place I, I used to live in Alamogordo, New Mexico. That's in the southern part of New Mexico, about 90 miles north of El Paso. And uh, when you go west from Alamogordo, uh, you go through a beautiful area called uh, you go through past uh, Holloman Air Force Base, and then you pass beautiful White Sands National Monument. And then you it, you enter a, 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 just miles and miles of desert, and there's a big sign there that says, it's not like Area 51 says, you know, no crossing, whatever. It simply says if you have a camera and you pull it out and use it, you will be arrested. I mean, wow. it, you can take pictures all you want at Area 51, but if you pull out a camera in, in, at White Sands Proving Ground, you're going to jail. And first of all, you're going to be fined. And if they think you're spying, you're in a lot worse trouble than you imagine. And this is not like in Washington, D.C., where you can rebel, act stupid, or do something, and uh, you'll uh, get a fine, and, you know, George Soros will pay for it for you. Uh, <laughs> these people will put – these people will hurt you. They they mean business. Yeah. If it doesn't count there, huh? Yeah, that's, that's – uh, that, that – I – think it's really a bad idea. I, th- I think it's a great idea that, that everybody wants to get uh, a disclosure of various different things out that can happen. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that, totally. I just I don't. I think uh, when you bring it to a level of a violence and that sort of thing, you're looking to get a bunch of people hurt that don't need to be in the, in, on either side, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Yes, well, I think that's logical and good advice for people who are listening tonight and might have thought of participating in that. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And there are other ways to go about it. Now, also, Daryl, there was a recent interview on Tucker Carlson with President Trump about UFOs. And the first thing that President Trump did say is, I can't get into it, but I'll give you my personal opinion. So right there, it says that there's still deeply classified information that he's not and he can't reveal. So he did share his personal thoughts, but that's not at all the, you know, the depth of what's, what's there, what's available, what's going on. He said, I can't get into it. And I think a lot of people missed that statement because he said it kind of softly and then went right into his personal opinion. So what did you think of that? Well, first of all, the, uh, Ultimately, uh, a president doesn't know much about the uh, highly compartmentalized and uh, secret access programs uh, in which these particular matters are kept. In fact, most the only president I know that knew anything about that to any real degree, only two presidents really, one was uh, Truman, and uh, believe it or not, he uh, – got in a conversation with somebody who was running Area 51 a long time ago before anybody knew what Area 51 was. Mm-hmm. And they basically told him to bug off. And he <laughs> uh, informed them that he'd just send some troops out there and take it over. And, uh, well, immediately he got answers. That's my point. But the fact is that president didn't know. There, the only other president I think that knew a, a fair amount, and, and, and again, I don't think he knew everything, but he knew uh, knew more than most presidents do, and that was John F. Kennedy. And uh, there are some people who think he was assassinated as a result of it. But the fact is he did know uh, more than other presidents and uh, fascinating stuff. It, it's, it's just fascinating research if you like to get into that sort of thing. Yeah. Now tell us more about that. How do you know he knew so much about it? Well, there's documents and and papers that you can research and you can cross reference and and see a lot more about. Uh, uh, then, there, of course, then you get into the whole conspiracy thing. Uh, who who killed JFK? Well, according to uh, 
the attorney general's uh, right hand, the assistant attorney general, after Lyndon Bain Johnson died, uh, the assistant attorney general said the attorney general told him that Lyndon Bain Johnson said that he was responsible for the assassination himself. Wow. So, I mean, it, it, uh, that's pretty pretty wild stuff, you know. I can't prove it. I don't I don't know that to be true. I don't have any direct evidence of that. But that's the uh, the statement that were made. And uh, I suspect even if that were true, that there were a lot of other people involved in that uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, Had to the, be. Uh, they, well, the, the, some people think the CIA was in on it. Some people think the uh, – uh, uh, and there may have been a rogue element involved in that. Uh, that's that's entirely possible. I know my brother, uh, he's a big uh, JFK uh, assassination conspiracy guy, and he asked me about stuff like that all the time, and I said, I, I don't know. It's call me when it's over. You know, I mean, 30 <laughs> years of, of running that thing down. You guys waste your life doing it. Call me and tell me the big answer. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we were going, we were traveling, and it was on the day we were going through Oklahoma. We were coming back, and we went through Dallas on the very day that they had the anniversary for the Kennedy assassination there. So he said, let's stop by Daly Plaza. I want you to look at it for me. And we had my mother and wife there and everything, so we all just stopped and looked around, checked it out. And he says, I want to know what you think. I said, I'm not a conspiracy buff. I don't know anything about this realistically other than basic news. And he said, you were in the CIA. I said, but that doesn't – somebody can be a force sweeper in the CIA. That doesn't mean they're a spy or anything like that. He said, but you knew assassins. You knew this. You knew that. And I said, that's true. And he said, "How would you do it if, if 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 you had to set this up? How would how would it be done?" And I said, "I would put somebody in that building." He said, "That's a book depository building." I said, "That's probably where I'd put my patsy because you got to have a fall guy for this whole thing." Yeah, and they did. I said, "Your other shooters, I would put one up on the bridge. I would put one up in this tree here on the grassy knoll." And I would put a, a third one in that red building behind us. I said that way you got him triangulated, and you got your nut shooter on top of that. So it's 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 a fairly easy, it's it, it's it's a fairly easy thing to do if, if someone were planning that. It, to me, um, of course, now it'd be uh, virtually impossible because. Uh, good night. There's so much security now because of things like that, and that, and I'm glad to see it. Uh, but uh, back then, there was, the security was far less lax, and uh, and far it was it was there was not a great deal of security. And uh, good night. I mean, even the even the the patsy got shot. I mean, the, I mean yeah. <laughs> how big a security right. is that after after he supposedly shot the president, and somebody walks up and plugs in. So uh, there's just uh, there's just a lot of stuff out there that just so many loose ends and the magic bullet and all this. I, that, and then for a president of, of the United States to be autopsied by an as, assistant uh, who's not even qualified to really do that, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Well, uh, no, it just makes no sense at all. Doesn't add up. That's for sure. And. No. It's really it's really shocking when you hear that Johnson actually admitted he was behind it. So do you think that it had anything to do with his knowledge of UFOs and the technology they were uh, exchanging? Well, the latest spin out there uh, among those doing a lot of the research says that uh, JFK was actually uh, knowledgeable of that and wanted to exploit it. Uh, that's entirely possible. I don't know that to be true, uh, but I do know that he wanted to close down the Vietnam War. He wanted that thing off the books, and uh, Johnson didn't. And that Ooh. that was very clear. And uh, so, if there was a a, a motive, uh, certainly Johnson had it. I mean, uh, that he wanted that thing to go on, and he realized after years that. Uh, that horrible boondoggle around his neck uh, killed off 50-some thousand of our boys 
of our blood and treasure, and then uh, of course hundreds of thousands of uh, Vietnamese, and uh, just what a waste of humanity! What a total yeah. waste! It was terrible. It was absolutely horrible. But again, it's like you never know how deep this rabbit hole goes. And so let's go more into the alien rabbit hole. Now, from our interview with you a few weeks ago, you discussed your experience as a child and then as a teenager. And these were not pleasant. And you have learned how to basically investigate all of these other things that are happening from abductions to cattle mutilations to implants. And your opinion, based on what we heard from you last time, is that these things are not to be trusted on any level. I, I, I think that it is wise for anyone to, uh, to look at something like that. It, it, it's something that claims to be from another world and is here to save the planet, fix those on the whole, and do all these wonderful things. And I don't care whether you're a creationist and believe the – the uh, the earth is only 7,000 years old or whether you're an evolution believe it's like 68 million years old with the, the dinosaurs roaming around biting people and whatnot. My thinking is that any, any civilization that approaches us and uh, lays all this stuff out and does all, and claims they're going to do all these wonderful things, upgrade our DNA and do all this stuff, and then they don't do any of it that we can see. We they don't fix the planet. The the, the so-called chemtrails and all that. Nothing has been fixed. When are they going to get started? So that indicates to me that someone's not telling the truth. And as an illustration, I love to use over and over is if you got I'm in a room and there's a dead body there and a knife sticking out of his back and there's eight people in the room. I better not get eight different stories if I'm investigating that case because that person did not die eight different ways. But when you <laughs> go to eight different countries, you find eight different stories of the same aliens, no difference whatsoever, eight, eight different stories about where they come from and what they're doing and all of that. It just it, – it, it, it didn't happen eight different ways. It just didn't, and it, it, it befuddles me to see people – not being critical enough in their thinking to say, wait a minute. Uh, I mean, you know, if somebody <laughs> if somebody gets robbed and, and uh, the police pull over eight different people and they get eight different stories, uh, they're all going downtown because it didn't happen eight different ways. It just didn't. So right. the, the consistency one has to look at in the abduction scenarios and the stories, uh, you, have, you look for patterns inside these stories. And, when you don't find those patterns and when you find a lot of uh, filler, so to speak, um, a lot of nonsensical stuff, we have to wonder what's going on. I think you're right. We have to ask a lot of critical questions about all of this. And well, one of the things that has concerned us as interviewers when we've talked to people, it, this thing about implants, I mean, we we put tags on wild animals and track where they go. Is this any different, people having implants? Thank you for bringing that question up because I think it is quite a bit different. Uh, and I, I have people question me on that all the time. And the, the usual argument I get from people is, well, we do the same thing to animals, so they're doing it to us, and that's all there is to it. And my response is, uh, well, no. And they say, what do you mean? I said, well, uh, since I kind of know where this is already going, I said, I'd like to offer you an explanation. If we capture a wild lion like you're talking about and we're going to implant him or tag him in some way and we anesthetize him with a, some kind of anesthesia and we've got him there laying on the table, we're implanting, doing all our scientific work. And all of a sudden, the lion wakes up and scratches or attacks one of us and hurts us or anything. Should we kill the lion? Oh, no, no. Should it's, no, that it, it's not it's done his fault. It's our, that's our problem. We should anesthetize him better and so on. I said, okay, I'm just trying to get it all straight in my head because it's all mm -hmm. the same thing to you. He said, that's right. I said, okay, so if I wake up on the table and the aliens are 
didn't anesthetize me very good. Can I kill them? Oh, no, that's immoral. How dare you say that? <laughs> I said, now, why are you applying the rules for the alien to me but not to lions? I mean, you know, I, I, I have no interest in harming anybody, but that's not the point. I said, you see how you've got this insane double standard going on? And, uh, well, they're in, well, you know, they, they really go crazy at this point, and they just have a real problem with it. And I said, listen to me. I said, I understand what you're saying, but your logic is skewed. And what we're doing, what they're doing, I assure you, isn't the same thing. When we're tracking an animal at, or for reasons of – for whatever, you know, for it, fish, they do the same thing with fish. Uh, we're checking the. In fact, uh, one of my, one of the one of the people recently sent me an implant from a fish, and the guy that sent it to me was a uh, a chef in San Francisco. He said this thing. One of my customers bit into this, and he said bit, and he said, "What is that?" And I said, "It's a RFID chip used to attract fish." And he said, "But." And I said it's just, it's 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 a it's a good scientific process. What the comparison where it falls apart is what are they doing versus what we would do? Well, we're tracking fish to see, so we can make the populations work properly and so on. What the alien has done with the so-called implants? First of all, they're not tracking devices. Second, they're not uh, they're not they're not transponders. And third, which the big question is, then what are they? Well, isn't it fascinating that the alien won't tell you? They won't tell you anything. And the only thing I ever get, and I, this is hand of God, this is a true story. I got I got a letter this week from a, a lady, and she uh, drew a picture of me. She said, I've never met you, she said, but here's the image I was given by the alien and said not to give information to this man. Huh. So at least I'm on the, the I'm on the 10 most wanted list, I guess. But the same <laughs> thing was when I went to Istanbul, Turkey, uh, years ago, uh, I was talking to about 300 people, finally finished talking to them. And one lady stood there for a long time. And I said, young lady, do you have a question or do you want me to answer or can I help you? And she says, um, I saw you in a dream last night. I said, "Well, that's very normal. You know, I, mo most women do see me in the dream." And uh, <laughs> we laughed about that. And uh, I said, "I'm I'm just kidding, of course." And she said, "No, I really did have a dream." I said, "Well, tell me about it." And she said, "You were with these tigers and lions and giant snakes." I said, "Young lady, I have a Bengal tiger, a mountain lion, and three giant pythons, eighteen feet long." Mm. Oh, my gosh. She said, it wasn't a dream. I said, I doubt that it was. I said, any special message for me? There always is. I didn't say anything to her. Other than that, she said, yes, I'm not supposed to give you any information whatsoever. And I oh said, my I haven't God. heard that ever. I, said, I hear it all the time. I've got, I, it's one of my presentations. I actually show different drawings people make of me that have never met me. And they're similar drawings with mustache and whole nine yards. And uh, and they're always told the same thing: not do not give this man any information. So oh, if they're here to help the plant fix the ozone hole, and I'm finding out about if they're implants, why is it they want me to keep my big mouth shut? And nobody here any this. Uh, yeah, why don't they want you to communicate these people to communicate with you? What's the big deal about that? Why? What are they so afraid of that, with you? That's that is a very good question. Very very good question. And I could tell you, but I'd I'd have to kill myself if I did. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the old CIA joke is, yeah, I got to kill somebody if I tell you the oh, secret. I got to yeah. kill you afterward or something. It's, it's really <laughs> stupid things that people believe. One guy told me, he said you're CIA, and I said, well, how do you know that? And he said, well, you got it. They don't retire; you, they kill you. And I said, really? I said, well, what are all these FBI and the CIA people doing still alive? No, they're all dead. <laughs> I said, did they have a special graveyard for them that they kill them and put them in? No, you. Once they're finished with you, they just kill you. I said, why in the world would anybody join? You're not yeah. making any sense. 
You're, you're acting stupid. That's so right. uh, anyway, that's that's just nuts. So I guess well, I'm on a, I'm a, a, some kind of a wanted list or something. I don't I know. I guess your poster must be in that uh, Starship Enterprise in the sky. But here's the here's the thing that PK and I were talking about this during the week. And what do these implants do? You're saying it's not a tracking device. It's not a GPS locator. So what's the point of inserting this into somebody's body? What do they get out of it? That's uh, that's a great question. Uh, we can, since the alien's not going to tell us, we're going to have to uh, uh, come up with our own answers. And uh, yep. I think to to take a, a kind of a, a straight direction on this, let me bring the uh, audience up to speed on from 1994 forward. 1994, I was uh, asked by uh, John Muir Medical Hospital to come do a presentation on medical complications of alleged human alien contact, specifically implants. This was before we ever did any public surgeries whatsoever. Now, the reason that is significant is all I've got to show these people are x-rays of what I think may be in fact implanted devices by the alien. I base that on the fact that I have studied this and also had my own experience at age 12 where I got an implantation through the nasal passage. Ooh. So when I was at the doing this presentation for all these 250 surgeons, doctors, and medical staff, this is a paid position, by the way, uh, for an AMA sponsored program for continuing education for medical personnel. So one of the things I told them, I said, um, I'm going to make five predictions. And they said, okay. I said, the first prediction is if these objects that we're looking at here on the x-rays and MRIs are alien in origin, there will be no chronic or acute inflammatory cells around the object. Now, the reason doctors would have a problem with that is if you get a splinter in your hand and you don't get it out and it stays there, all of a sudden these little white cells start attacking and uh, an inflammatory response begins immediately because the body is trying to eject the foreign body out of your body. It's trying to get That's rid right. of it because it knows it's not supposed to be there. If for whatever reason, let's say you were in Vietnam and a hand grenade went off, you got a little piece of shrapnel in you and uh, they didn't take the shrapnel out for whatever reason, the body will uh, will surround that piece of shrapnel with a, a chronic, at first it's acute, meaning that, that means it's immediate. It, it inflammatory cells, little phagocytes will group around it and just basically wall it off so the body won't recognize it's in there anymore. And then uh, then the chronic position begins to happen and so you have this walled off area. Well, when we, everybody, of course, the, the doctors are all thinking, well, those are just foreign objects in there and that they've got an in, inflammatory chronic or acute cells around the object. Well, that's number one. I told them that there would be no chronic or acute inflammatory cells around the object. So I've kind of got a noose around my neck right off the bat. So yeah. in other words, when we do the first surgery, we better come up with that. Second thing that we're going to find, there, there will be nerve cells present in attendance, present but inappropriate to the affected area. In other words, there's going to be nerve cells present there that shouldn't be there. So that's the second right. noose I put around my neck. The third noose I put, I said, was the objects will be absent of any discernible technology if they're alien. That just stunned everybody. The fourth thing is a metallic, plastic, ceramic implants, whatever they are, uh, they're, in my opinion, they're not going to be over 15 to 50 years old because I don't think the alien's that far ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I told them, I said, please, if, and I brought two women up there to, to testify. I said, these women have all te will testify, and they did, and they were pretty brutal to those doctors. I said, when you find... Uh, people with these stories, whether you believe them or not, at least examine these lumps, bumps, and scars, and tissue, and things like on, on these people, especially uh, uh, 
especially a lump is a good example after an, an abduction event. The reason you want to examine that is, that I said, because eventually these implants that we're looking at are going to be passe. A lot of them already are. They're old, and that's the reason we're finding them. I said the new implants will be biological implants, and they will, in my opinion, the, the ones that we will really need to be looking for are going to have cells that are present in the lump that are central nervous system cells, and basically it's going to be a miniature brain anywhere oh in the body. Well, when we did our first uh, – we did first – the next year, we did the first uh, two uh, surgeries, uh, one in the hand and one in the foot. And then we took the objects out, and I, I personally removed the biological uh, membrane surrounding each of these objects. Now, what that means to to most people is, well, that's the acute or the chronic inflammatory cells that walled it off. That's what everybody thought. But remember what I said. If these objects are alien in origin, there'll be no chronic or acute inflammatory cells. So that's going to be a different kind of biology. Well, the, the, we took it to the uh, pathologist. He says, he looks at it and says, uh, just looks at it openly and says, well, those are inflammatory cells, uh, you know, the chronic cells that walled it off. And I said, um, I'd like for you to check it. And he said, well, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I, I don't want you to be pretty sure. I want you to know. Right. So he did the examination and he says, these are not inflammatory cells. There is no inflammation present at all. In fact, he says there's a nerve supply. That's the second thing I said that would be. He said there's a blood supply and a nerve supply to this object. The, he he was just stunned. And uh, anyway, he laid it out in, in big medical terms. He said, this is not possible. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, he said, the cells that I'm finding there are keratinous uh, material. And I said, so tell us what keratin is. He said, keratin is your hair, fingernails, or surface skin. There's no way that for this to be inside the body down next to the bone. It's impossible. I said, well, we got 17 witnesses, an attorney, and two doctors, and I did the hypnotic anesthesia. He said, I don't care if God was present. He said, it didn't happen, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> oh, well, that's boy. what I want to hear. I want to hear it's impossible. That's what I want to hear because we already have the evidence. We know. And then later we had them studied at Los Alamos and New Mexico Tech and found it, it got a lot weirder than that. And we found that the materials were extraterrestrial in origin because they were rare meteorites. Lamellar, lamellar simply means a needle-like or like a, a quarter-inch needle in a T-shaped formation like a capital T inside the biological cocoon. And there was 11 different elements surrounding the metals, which should not have been there. And again, the, the professors and others, PhDs, look at it and says, well, that's not possible. That doesn't make any sense. These, it just wouldn't be that. Just wouldn't be that way. It doesn't make any sense. That, that's exactly right. It doesn't make any sense. So that's the history of the first surgeries and uh, again, uh, to d your your initial question, what are they? What are they doing? Well, um, part of that answer we can possibly deduce by where they're located in the body. In other words, if one of them is in your nasal passage, that would tell us one thing. If one is in located in your foot, that would be a, a – or your hand, it would be a different message. Uh, but they seem – some of these implants seem to be um, involved in the uh, neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and potassium. If that's true, if it's true, uh, because we found this, the, these levels were off in certain abductees, that would mean that they, the implants and or the alien, directly or indirectly, is altering the neurotransmitters of of these um, implants for the abductee. Well, uh, anybody with um, basic medical knowledge will tell you if somebody's controlling your neurotransmitters, they decide whether you're happy, sad, 
or suicidal. Now, again, let me make a, a leap here for a second. In our statistics, one of the questions that I ask our abductees, we found there's all kinds of neat, fascinating statistics that we found out about these people, 45% Native American, Indian, Irish, and so on and so on. Really interesting stuff. But what we found also is something that stunned us. I asked the question in my questionnaire, uh, have you ever had uh, suicidal or thoughts about harming yourself that were not yours? And I mean to tell you the, the responses on that were astounding. It was over 50%. So the, the people alien who believed that yeah yes. that they were being manipulated in some way. Well, it makes sense, and you can tell when the thoughts are not really yours. If you're very in tune, sure. if you're very sensitive, you know that it's not coming from you. So this is very troubling because certainly they are affecting. They can affect mood, or they can at the very least monitor your mood. At the very worst, control it. So. So that's very disturbing that they might be involved in Our, something the, like that. The stats that. actually are 56% is what it says here. I'm looking on my own stats. Hi. 56% felt it's suicidal for no life. apparent reason. That's now, very here's disturbing. Now, a question that just got – it is. It's very troubling. Now, somebody just sent a question over, and they said, how how do you know if you have an implant? For example – some people think uh, they can identify implants by using a UV light over their skin, and they claim that they can see uh, that there's an implant by applying a UV light. Have you ever heard that before? Well, first of all, I'm the guy that discovered the use of the ultraviolet light uh, in 1992. It, the ultraviolet light, what it will tell you is not if you have an implant. But if you've had physical contact with an alien where they physically touched you uh, and carried you away or took you away, the, uh, the very first thing that they'll do it, when they touch you is they leave, a, 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 for lack of a better term, a sweat-like trace on you. And there's two kinds of uh, a, a, a trace that will show up with the, uh, uh, under, under the ultra, ultraviolet light. Uh, and lots of things will, will light up under an ultraviolet light, lots of things, makeup, oil, anything, all kinds of stuff. But this stuff is very specific. It will often take, if it's a casual contact, it will take the uh, form of bruisings or fingerprints where they basically held you or even strapped you down uh, for whatever they're going to do to you. And that's what the black light's for. The black light will not find implants. It's never That was never – part of my thesis and if you if you get my video off of the my alienhunter.org you'll find out very quickly and I'll do a demonstration there and show you how to actually use the black light on the video but it's not for locating implants first of all the most important thing that people need to know out there is implants are extremely rare i don't care how many times i tell people that I guarantee you, and I go to conference, I'm going to meet at least 50 people that have got an alien implant, at least 50. And everybody thinks they've seen a UFO has got an implant. That's just not true. It is not true. I can't say that enough. But if you think you have one anyway, even though you may have a foreign object, and we've done implant uh, surgeries and found people had foreign objects that we really knew that weren't implants, had a pretty good idea, and they weren't. They were just foreign objects. They were pencil lead and things like this that get inside people. They forgot that they got stuck with a pencil when they were six years old or something like that in school. And, well, <laughs> a pencil lead is not going to degrade. It's going to be there. It's uh, uh, That graphite's going to stay. It'll be there for years. I mean, it's. I'm sorry. It may look like an implant, but it's not. But if you do think you have an implant, one of the best things you can do is go to a chiropractor. And don't go to a doctor and mention aliens and implants. As soon as you do, they're going to ask. They're going to ask you to leave the building. Don't do that. <laughs> Just tell a chiropractor. I bump myself here and like use on the arm or wherever you think this implant is at, and have him give you a soft tissue X-ray. He'll do that. Charge you a lot less than the doctor will. 
You bring the x-ray, scan it real well, the biggest resolution you can get, send it to me, and we'll look at it. We'll do it for free. We'll look at that thing for free and tell you what we think, and I'll ask you a lot of questions about your experience. But uh, to walk into a doctor's office and say, you need to take a saline implant out of me because I know it's an implant, uh, that's not going to happen. Right. You just, right. You just made some, several huge mistakes. When you did that. Well, now you've identified a number of very curious things that go on with these implants, from the lack of inflammatory response to nerve cells uh, collecting in areas where they shouldn't be, and the possible uh, influence of people's moods and emotions and thoughts. So what's your opinion about why they're doing this? It's, you said earlier it's not for tracking purposes. But now we're getting closer to mood manipulation, emotional manipulation. What is that the sole purpose, do you think? Or is there something else going on with these nerve cells showing up? A I, I don't think that that is the I, – I don't think that's the sole purpose. Uh, I think that – I think, first of all, and I, I'm going to tell your audience uh, this, and they're – I probably get in trouble doing this, but uh, the first thing that any time the alien tells me something, I found out some great truth from the alien. The first thing I automatically think is it's a lie. Mm -hmm. It's a ruse. It's a red herring. It's designed to get me off track. And uh, one of my uh, the lady that uh, works with me, uh, when I first met her about 25 years ago, she was at a MUFON conference. And I was speaking there with Dr. Jacobs, and uh, she came by, and she was walking by, and I said, do you have a question? And she said, no. And I said, I don't mind you asking. And she said, well, I'm not a groupie. I didn't think that you were, I said. And she <laughs> says, I do have a question. You said that the best investigators are often spoon-fed their information by the alien. I said, I did say that. She looked at me and said, uh, in light of two of the best investigators probably in the country here tonight, <laughs> how do you answer that for yourself? And I said, why, well, I answer it the same way I would with anyone else. I said, of course they spoon feed me like they do anybody, get us off track. She said, uh, does that bother you? And I said, no, ma'am. I said, the only difference between me and other people is I actually know when they're doing it. Most people don't. Okay. So you recognize I said they get spoon fed something and it leads them off track, and literally you'll end up writing books and things about it, and to find out that it's just not it's not accurate. Okay, so getting back to the implants, and you know the difference between the spoon fed information and and what's really going on. What do you think is really going on? Why are they implanting people? As rarely as it is, like you said, it's not a, an everyday occurrence. Why are they doing it? Well, some of the things they're doing it for, well, they, they, again, it d depends on where where they are and in what. And uh, there is one case where an implant was actually found in a mutilated cow. Hmm. So what would that be? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, what? they didn't. They didn't do a very good investigation. They made a mistake of leaving the cow, went to pick up the investigators at the airport, and they came back and found the implant was gone. Uh oh. So that wasn't very smart. That's um, really that was not, not good. I would never left the body. I would never never leave the evidence. Never do that. Um so um these uh, these these uh, implants uh, can be uh, they, there's a lot of things they do. Uh, in my opinion, there's a real uh, possibility that the aliens discovered uh, in how to transmit information via the cells. Mm -hmm. But they can also do this. They can do this without implants. Now, I mean, they're they're e even in in, in uh, good night. Uh, the intelligence community's got things along the same lines where they can inject thoughts and things like that in people and never even get anywhere near them. Uh, that's been done. And, uh, and so the implants to me are more specifically uh, involved in the process of, uh, 
of uh, dealing with it. Like I said, neurotransmitters is just one, just one thing in itself. Uh, implants are there to gather information. They are, they are invasive by nature simply because they were simply they're in you. I mean, that ought to be evident to anybody. It's invasive. And second of all, it's parasitic. By parasitic means that it, it lives off of the host. It's doing things without the host uh, participation, so to speak, without your known participation. If yeah, you do some of the things that the implant was doing, you might not like it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. We think that the that that the alien that the the implant to me the whole concept is a Trojan horse. Many what? Many of the people many people have that have an implant. Uh, I, I have one this week. Uh, they said I think I've got an implant. I'm pretty sure of it. I said send me the the medical reports, and they did. And I said okay, that looks looks very interesting. And uh, and we started questioning about it. And right off the bat, he says, I don't want to remove it. And I said, okay, I'm not asking you to do so, but I am asking you some things like, uh, why do you not want to remove it? I, I'd, I'd <laughs> like to know the answer to that. I said, per, per, personally, I generally like to leave things in people because I want to see what they're doing. And I want to see if we can communicate with it or do something or motivate it or ping it, so to speak. But I said, uh, why do you not want it moved? He said, if they put it in me, then it's supposed to be there. That's called Ooh. programming. Yes. Already got him. Already got him. I mean, it's no, there's no question to, uh, to, to function. I mean, there it is. Uh, but the, uh, the implants themselves, uh, to me, I, I think we can learn a lot about the implant. In fact, I'm going to do a presentation in the United Kingdom in September, and then I'm going immediately after there to uh, Cosenza, uh, Italy, and do the uh, another presentation there on the implants. And there I'll be talking, number one, about the implants, the different kinds, and all of that. But the thing we need to really be discussing, in my opinion, is the placement of the implants in different parts of the body. Why would the alien do that? Well, it's obvious to me that he's following, following meridians. And if he's following Ooh. meridians, then there's, there are points. I mean, you guys uh, know enough yourselves about meridians to know that that suggests a great deal more than what <laughs> than something general, generally speaking. Well, there's a much bigger agenda then. And, and I got a ton of questions coming in about these implants. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a very short commercial break. And then we're going to come back and talk about, do these implants put out a frequency? It's one of the questions that just came in. And more about what you think they're doing with these things. So, all right, everybody, you are listening to Supernatural Girls Radio, and we will be right back. Pure essential oil, specialized mineral, and a revolutionary anti-aging technology, Astridian combines the best of all scientifically proven ingredients in easy-to-use creams, lotions, and concentrated serums. Astridian's advanced line of products take your skin to a new level of being healthy and beautiful. We offer a variety of collections that address all your skin concerns. The Essential Anti-Aging Series treats and moisturizes your skin for a long-lasting, younger look. The Multivitamin Series promotes healthy skin with high-quality vitamins and minerals. The Sports Series restores skin from cellular damage and stress. Astridian also offers a revitalizing solution for hair and a professional series for doctors and medical spas. Visit astridian.love today and begin your new journey to healthy, beautiful, youthful skin. Astridian. Beyond your expectations. Are you ready for a new experience of freedom and powerful connection? Would you like a positive, effortless change in your life? Then come to CosmicFusion.com, where we offer the most advanced energy clearing and expansion techniques in the world with a quantum vortex energy to activate your divine blueprint and life's purpose. 
When your soul leads the way with cosmic fusion and quantum vortex energy, you can break clear of past difficulties and blocks with the power of the source. With cosmic fusion, the source energy does the work for you. It's easy and effortless. Listen to our free meditation right from our Cosmic Fusion website, the Cosmic Code Meditation. Sign up for one of our interactive webinars today. Come to Cosmic Fusion, www.kosmicfusion.com to experience an effortless awakening and transformation. Are you ready for an upgrade? Are you ready for a new experience of living in the fifth dimensional magic and powerful connection? Then visit CosmicFusion.com today. CosmicFusion.com Your property tax bill. Have you seen it lately? It's frightening. Your property taxes are going up while your home value is going down. It's time to fight back and win. For the real truth about the property tax system, get Attorney Pat Quintilian's book, Are You Getting Screwed on Your Property Taxes? How to Find Out and How to Fix It. Attorney Quintilian answers all your questions and gives you the facts you need to fight a property tax bill that is spiraling out of control. You'll also read about what happens to property owners who don't check their property records, only to find out too late they're taxed on square footage, fixtures, and even buildings that they don't own. Is this happening to you? Learn your rights. Buy Attorney Pat Quintilian's book today. Are you getting screwed on your property taxes? How to find out and how to fix it. Available on Amazon.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I'm here with my co-host, PK in Tucson, and our terrific guest tonight, Daryl Sims. We are talking about some very important topics. We're talking about implants, alien implants. So we're going to get back to that. We have a ton of questions that have been coming in by text. People want to know, Daryl, what's the story on these frequencies that some people are saying these implants are putting out, that they put out a a certain tone or frequency? Do you have experience with that? Well, the the, the, I, I need to go back historically to where that all started uh and then this is this is one of the unfortunate aspects of my study that i find found discomforting uh during the first um implant removals in 1995 in camarillo california uh a podiatrist who was doing the the surgery on the foot uh, pulled out a thing called Dr. Goss, and it's a Goss meter. It's a it's the cheapest Goss meter you can find. And he says, "Oh my God, look at the signals this thing is giving off." Uh, no, it's not actually. And I mentioned that, but uh, you have to understand when you want press and when you want people scared, when you want notoriety, you say things like that. Right. Because I've taken those same implants. I t- had them myself. I had someone holding them for me at the time. Every, t- every someone I trusted and knew, uh, and was in my sight at all times. I tested these things with all kinds of equipment. We did not find a signal, quote unquote, from them. It doesn't make any difference. Once you publish, uh, that's the gospel truth. And so he went around telling people that these things gave off this incredible signal. Later, after I, uh, uh, what's the kindest way of doing dismissed the podiatrist, uh, he went around and telling people that, uh, and then he had got a partner who was a scientist and said, we found all kinds of radio signals. We found a, a secret NASA transmission code inside these implants we found the biological internet of the alien Uh that sounds wonderful it just there just ain't no truth to it okay and uh, long story short there was a brilliant brilliant scientist and this is always going to happen when you make things statements that your body can't cash 
you're going to get in trouble. And this brilliant scientist and an MD wrote and said, wait a minute, how do you know all of that? Thank you, God, for somebody asking the right question. Prove it, right. in other words. Mm-hmm. Well, they couldn't prove it. Well, you, know, we, you don't question what we say. Yeah, we do. We question everything. We question everybody and everything. So uh, needless to say, they brushed that one under the carpet because uh, there was no evidence to support it. And what these, this one scientist said, and I've got the email. I can send it to people so they can actually see it. He said, um, how do you know that? And they quoted this test and that test. He said, oh, wait a minute. you got to understand, this guy runs those tests. He said, that test doesn't show that at all. What does that mean? That means somebody's fabricating information. It's like going down to get your tire fixed in the, in the tire space. It says, uh, well, there's supposed to be air in that tire, and you say, oh, no, there's a special alien grease inside there. And he <laughs> checks it, and there's air in there. Well, that kind of doesn't work. And no. so they caught him, and they mm-hmm. got real quiet, and the next time, our, uh, then the podiatrist finally passed away, and but the scientist went on Art Bell program some time ago, and he said, "We found uh, the biological internet. We found a secret code of." Uh, uh, well, the problem is, where is that secret code? Where's the, you? Did, you obviously recorded it, right? Where is the beef? There ain't no <laughs> beef. So somebody made this stuff up, and it started with Roger Lear. He did that, and I told him, I said, Roger, he said, I'm sitting here looking, look at this thing spike. I said, Roger, we're inside an office, a dentist's office that's full of mechanical metal. I said, the walls are full of conduit, which are got electrical wires. What do you think, uh, uh, what do you think Mr. Goss is going to do here? It's going to sing everywhere you go in this place. Right, right. Now, when I took them outside, when there was no electricity, no no anything around them, they didn't give off a signal. Well, that's because aliens quit doing it. Mm-hmm. No, wow. that's not the real reason. All right. The reason you're not finding it is because it didn't exist. So, unfortunately, that's the story. So, okay. have we found – do we know – that? do we – do I want to test for that? Absolutely. Of course I want to test – for any kind of a signal, electromagnetic, electromagnetic uh, or in any any level of an electromagnetic spectrum that it might give off, I want to see if there's a, a, a neurochemical, uh, anything that would give off a signal. If, if we could ping the, the implants, I want to take the implants that I have to a major university. It takes a little money to do this. You just don't go do it takes money to do this and have these implants all set up and tested independently so we can see if they're, we can ping them basically, see if they respond back in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I don't know whether they do or not. That's another test we have to do. So and the second thing I want to do, if some of them pinged, I want to then bring people in who have implants in them that we're reasonably sure are real implants and see if we can get we can ping them inside the people and then see if we can find any correlating signals in the ones out of the body or in the body and if any of them will communicate with each other. That would be a great test to do. That would give you some real sure. information. It just that takes would... money. Money solves my problems. I can get yeah. I can have that done in a month. I know, really. Well, anybody who wants to donate, Daryl Sims, there you go. It's a good cause. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> Why not? You know, you want to find these things out. It, it, I mean, it makes sense, but the, the thing that amazes me is that the, the most of the funding that I get, which is very rare, it comes from individuals who just want to know the answer to certain right. things. Like a, a great question, do these things have an isotopic ratio that is off-world? About 500 bucks, you can find that answer out. And there are people sure. that will pay for stuff like that. And uh, but science, but uh, people in the major people here in the UFO community who have got money coming out the kazoo, you know how much they donate for that? Not one. That's not true. I've had uh, one person donate a thousand dollars from a radio show one time. 
That's it. That was 20 years ago. Oh, my gosh. Some of the biggest people in in in, in the TV and the media world out there never donate a penny. And the first question out of their mouth is, well, when are you going to get all that done, Daryl? <laughs> well, one of the tests we have to do on fluorescence alone runs $14,000. I've got 15 samples, so 15 times 14,000. Let me see. How much is that anyway? Right. But here's a question for you, Daryl. Uh, Mr. Bigelow, have you met up with him? I know but Mr. Uh, Robert Bigelow very well. He funded three of our surgeries. Okay, because I was just going to bring that up because he is somebody who has a tremendous interest in this, <laughs> obviously. Yes, a lot he of does. Yes, he does. Yes, I, I could spend a whole show just on that one subject. Yeah. The problem and, is, uh, the first time I ever met uh, Bob Bigelow, he called me on the phone after the first two surgeries, and he said the following story. He said, I've got five men around me. Uh, they all have PhDs. One man has two PhDs and an MD. Now, you seem to find evidence that none of us knew even knew existed. And now you seem to be able to find a lot of it. Uh, he said, what do you owe the your ability to find that kind of evidence no one knew existed? And I said, if you want to find a donut, go find a cop. <laughs> they didn't laugh. The reason they didn't oh. laugh because they thought it was I was trying to be funny. I wasn't. I was giving them a metaphor that's still valid to this day. The metaphor is that if I told them, I said, if you want to find physical evidence, of an alien presence, I said, you'll find a Native American Indian tracker that understands the alien. If you do, you'll find your evidence. So uh, Bigelow has been uh, good to us in that sense. I don't have any complaints with the man. He's on the forefront of a lot of UFO work. He's paid for a lot of stuff. Uh, there are things that he's done or, or, or and other organizations have done is collaborations that some people don't like. And consider it uh, bad, and that 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 you know I'm not going to defend any of that. I can only d argue what it is that goes on with what I do. But he did fin fund uh, three of our next surgeries, and uh, and he paid for that out of pocket. And uh, I'm grateful that he did it. I mean, no one else came forward and did that, so I was delighted that he did. Uh, but the the big thing is that uh, I, 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 something I told Bob privately that I'll mention because it's because it's it's relevant. I said, you know, Bob, the big difference between me and you, I says, is several billion dollars. <laughs> wow. I said, other than that, I said, you and I are a lot alike. He said, what do you mean? I said, you love your grandkids, you're a good man, you're you're interested in this phenomena to no end, but nobody tells you how to run your show. Bob Bigelow runs Bob Bigelow's show. Daryl Sims runs Daryl Sims' show. Right. And even though you, you've offered to help me financially and things like that, I said, I, you would have to understand from day one, I don't answer to you. I answer to me. Like I said, we're a lot alike, and I don't think the that, that relationship would last very long because <laughs> you demand, and I and I said, and that, that's something you don't do for me. And right. uh, he, I, I guess, agreed because uh, at that point we did not do any any funding or anything else. But I will not be controlled by anyone. No one calls me and says we're not going to do this or we're going to do that. Uh, that's not that's not the way I do business. That's just not going to work. Right. Well, you both share a tremendous passion for finding the answers. And certainly he has tremendous resources to be able to go ahead and do it. I often wonder what else he knows because he, he doesn't come forward. With, maybe he does privately to you, but he doesn't divulge anything publicly about what he knows. Well, that that is true, and there are reasons for that because – even in the uh, – one of the things he has done in the space area in competing with NASA is he has an inflatable space station. Yeah. So that is just an – that is an incredible, uh, an amazing thing. But he's got a great mind, and, and, uh, and I admire him to that to no end. So I have no complaints against the guy in that respect. I just don't. Uh, I just uh, 
uh, I, I wish we could get along well, but it, it, w- it would have to be a grant to me as an example. It, you can't – you don't own me you, just because you – and I'm not saying he would do that. I'm just saying that that's the way it would be, and and uh, I know where which direction my research – well, let me give you an example, good example. Okay. Bob came to me and said uh, – he said, I would like to bring you, one of your doctors, up here to uh, – in front of our uh, 18 scientists at NIDS, the National Institute for Discovery Science, and do a presentation. Well, other UFO people are up there, too, doing their presentation. They did not get funded. I can tell you that right off the bat. These are Mm -hmm. scientists. They're not into the woo-woo and the weird stuff. If if there's no science to it, it ain't going to happen. So we came up. We did our presentation, and uh, then we left the room. They had a discussion. Bob comes down the stairs excited. He said, you're this is wonderful. He said they have voted unanimously to do the next three surgeries and to, to fund that uh, and who also uh, for you to pick out three of the implants, and they will uh, have those studied independently. And I said, I will agree to that if, if the implants are studied uh, uh, in a blinded study. No one can know where they came from. That, that'll never happen. He, he said, I totally agree. So that was that was good. It's a, it's a good scientific effort. And then I said, he said, but you don't seem to be terribly excited. They turned everybody in the UFO world except you, and you're not jumping up and down. I said, I'm not. And he says, well, why is that? And I said, well, I said, what I think what you're looking for and what the scientists are looking for are these objects extraterrestrial in origin. That makes sense that you would want to know that. I already know they are. Mm. I want to be, go to the phase two. He said, well, what's phase two? I said, I want to know what the isotopic ratios are. I said, the isotopic ratios are like phone numbers in the universe. And if you know the phone numbers of various metals, you can tell which where they come from, whether they're off-world or whether they're on-world. Our phone number of gold, iron, lead, or any other of these elements, they all have very specific uh, phone number, so to speak. Yeah, that's exactly what it is anywhere in the world. But w- like when you found the meteorite that was in in Antarctica, that meteorite uh, was from Mars. How do we know that? We went to Mars. We took some soil samples. Guess what? The meteorite in that had the iron in it and nickel matched the iron and nickel uh, isotopic ratio, the phone number, so to speak, from Mars. So that's how we knew. I said, I want to know what the where these metals come from and these elements. And he said, well, why do you want to know that? And I said, well, Bob, <laughs> I'm the alien hunter. I hunt <laughs> them that hunted me and hunted my son and hunt other people. I want to know who they are, where they are, where they're mining. I said, when I find the isotopic ratio number from there, I'll know where he's mining this stuff. He just looked at me rather puzzled. I mean, that's that's the next step. Uh, we have to do isotopic ratio testing on these things. That would be extremely important to know if they're using metals from here or if they're using metals from somewhere else. The first set of surgeries indicates they're using metals from outer space. Well, that's a big piece of information to have. So when do you do, do this next research study? When does that take place with these implants? As soon as it gets money. It- okay. Okay, because Bob. Uh, the yeah, isotopic ratio over. tests are they generally run about five hundred bucks a piece, five six hundred bucks, and, and like one of the implants I've got are these little tiny gold spheres that were found in a little girl's nose when they, she consciously describes an alien uh, putting them in her nasal passage, and her mother said, "What do I do?" And I said, "Well, have her sneeze into a Kleenex." She did. We found four tiny gold spheres the size of pinheads. And I have some of them, and uh, all you got to do is test them uh, and find out where the ice type ratios of the gold and the silver come from. Is it here or is it from outer space? I'd like to know the answer to that. That's kind of a basic question. We need to know that. Yes. Yes. I mean, there's been a lot of conjecture through the years also that the aliens are wanting to learn more about our emotional state. And I wonder if that fits in with uh, the implant and the way that it tracks mood. 
So it's an interesting possible connection, but I know that's been bantied about, you know, quite a few times about aliens have lost their own emotional body or they've never had one and they need, they want to understand it. So what do you think about that? Is that a possibility? Well, uh, anything's possible, uh, but what's probable is important to me. What's probable is these entities are these seven primary entities we call aliens. Or look like the DNA that they have, whatever that is, looks like it comes from Earth. Uh, mm-hmm. They did a DNA test on Bigfoot not long ago. They found that he was a simian, which is an ape-like creature. Well, no, no big guess about that. The second thing they found was he had mitochondrial DNA as well, which means that there was modern woman human DNA mixed in there. Now, how do you get that to happen? Well, that's called a transgenic being. A transgenic is when you take two things, put them together, and you come up with a third one. So the question is, where do you get modern human woman's DNA? Probably not from Venus or Pluto or Saturn. You probably get modern human woman DNA from planet Earth Mm -hmm. uh, and so on. And when you look at the reptile, where do you think you would get reptile DNA? Probably planet Earth. Where are you going to get praying mantis DNA? Where are you going to get Nordic DNA? Probably from Norway, I, I'm guessing, but that's probably a pretty decent guess. <laughs> yeah, Somebody is. came here, took the DNA out there, remodulated it into a transgenic being, sent them back here as aliens from other planets. The real question we need to be asking, who did that and why? Mm-hmm, if you exactly. understand that. See, you're, if we're all at, in my opinion, we're asking the wrong questions about the alien. What is he doing? What is he? Doing? He's doing what he's told. Mm-hmm. They always do that. It doesn't matter whether they treat you kind or treat you bad or mutilate you. It doesn't matter. They're doing what they are told to do. That's what they do. They live in a structured society that, for failure for obedience, would be termination. I mean, it's not like you go to court or anything there. It's real simple. You do what you're told. And so is this all part of a hive mind, these aliens? That's also how they do it? It it is. It's a hive mind among them because that's the way they're structured. When you get to their bosses, that's not a hive mind anymore. It's something different. And uh, my point is that uh, if – well, a, a good example in my book on implants my uh the lady who who's now deceased she wrote the she was helping me write it cuz i just don't have time to do all this stuff and do the research as well and she said well we need a, a really great singer for chapter 12 and i said well what do you need she said something incredible i said okay do aliens have implants she said that's an incredible statement for the chapter yay do aliens have <laughs> implants <laughs> and then it hit her like a ton of bricks. Daryl, do they? I said, sweetie, <laughs> aliens are implants. <laughs> they are a collection of implanted technology, <laughs> devices, and biology made to move and have its being so that it is controllable with a hive mind. They are implants in every sense of the word, the highest order. That is very interesting. Now, you know Dr. Jacobson, and you know his work on hybrids, right? I do. I do. Now, is that another hive concept where these hybrids have Uh, the same type of hive? First of all, I... I, I, I want to say that I admire Dr. Jacobs, always have. I think he's a brilliant mind. I think, and, and I could be completely wrong on this, but I think I'm right. I think as any investigator, and that includes I put me at the top of the list, anytime we get information that is, wow, the first thing you better be looking at is are, are you being spoon-fed? Mm-hmm. And one of the – someone questioned me on this recently in reference to him, and I said, uh, Dr. Jacobs is a brilliant man. He's got excellent work. I, I admire him. I said, so 
if you think I'm going to talk against him, you're wrong. He said, well, what do you think about his hybrid program? I said, I don't know a great deal about it. It's none of my business. If you want to know about his hybrid program, you should go ask him. I said, if you're asking me, have we found a bunch of hybrids like he has, the answer is no. That's either because we're looking in the wrong place, we're doing it backwards or wrong or something, or he's being spoon-fed. Because Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone else that's coming up with the same data. It is interesting, yes. And I appreciate your answer. We we love Dr. Jacobs too, and so he's a great you know, man. He is. Yes, and everybody in this field, you know, they have their own specialty and their own way of approaching investigation. So True. it's a fascinating thing to think about the possibility of the hive mind, and that it's so different from ours, and how they could come together in a, quite a bit of power, I would imagine, exists when you have a high mi- hive mind like that, whether it's hybrid or whether it isn't, whether it's just a bunch of, of aliens that are connected through being their own implants, that they have this connection, that they think alike, that they follow orders that way through a hive. May I underscore your, your thoughts there with, with an illustration? Yes. The uh, mass abduction of December 8th and December 11th, 1992 in Houston, Texas, where eight people were taken in a mass abduction uh, to a craft that was 50 miles thick, 600 miles across, and we think we have a video of it. Wow. Independently was filming the moon at the time, and uh, that's, that's just another – we could do a whole show on just that alone. But the bottom line is one of my senior investigators got taken. The reason he was taken is because I set this up as a trap for the alien. I am the alien hunter. My business is hunting the alien. That's what I did, and I designed and devised a trap for them to get them to respond to us rather than uh, us having to respond to them by being abducted, so to speak. So anyway, long story short, um, there's one part in there where Dale – my senior investigator is talking to the Nordic, and Dale's looking at this gigantic map-like thing. He said, I, I call it a map because I don't know what it was. He said it's three-dimensional, and he said it looked like – he laughed. And he said it looked like Indianapolis 500 ra- Raceway, like a, a like a, a raceway on a, on a three-dimensional map. And he said hmm. it had one little section about an inch long that wasn't filled in. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I asked the Nordic, what is it that uh, what is it that you think about that map? And he said, I didn't know what to think of it. So I simply asked – I asked the, uh, the Nordic, so that they like Dale very well uh, because he's very kind, gentle, and – very pliable, very uh, agreeable. I'm not, mm-hmm. so I'm not. I'm not by the party. Um, <laughs> so anyway, he says. Um, he said, uh, "What is that?" And the Nordic just looked at him like, kind of like it's dumb that you don't get it. And he says, "That is our interaction with mankind." Well, Dale's no fool. He's an engineer, so he sits there. He could, and he said that last that little mark there, that little section, he said that's the last hundred years that we have interaction with you. Well, Dale sits there and computes, since he's an engineer, how many of those little one-inch marks, so to speak, would it take to go around that thing? And he figures it out. He said, he said, Daryl, you're not even going to believe this. He said, but you're thinking about the alien is not much had, – had, hadn't been around that that long. He said, you may be more right than you know. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, according to the, the calculations I made based on that, that measurement, I counted that there were uh, – he said, that, that map was no more than 6,000 years old. He said, I don't understand. I don't get that. And I said, well, I think I do, and I said, thank you for the information. And uh, – uh, that's that's rather stunning. So uh, anyway, long story short, is after Dale 
did that uh, calculation. Then he looked at the Nordic, and the Nordic looked at him and said, what do you want? What is it that you really want? And Dale said, I want to stay here with you. And the Nordic said, that's impossible. And here's the answer. And I believe the, alien, the, the Nordic was telling the answer, the true answer. He said, your thinking is an infestation. Oh. Now, to put it in a, in a better light, so to speak, if you, had, if you were in a hive of uh, honeybees or wasps who have a hive mentality, and you got one of those wasps to start acting differently, and that spread throughout the hive, you know what would happen to the hive? It would fall apart. They would all die. Yeah. It, they, they could not exist. So the hive mentality is very valuable, but it cannot be breached. That might give someone out there with half a brain an illustration of what might need to be done. Well, that's very interesting. An infestation, yeah. a virus, so to speak, in that system could be effective, whatever that means. Now, when Dale had this experience, you said he was a plant. You wanted this to happen, and Dale was obviously prepared and ready for this. So was this something that he experienced totally consciously, or did he have his memory wiped and then you had to bring him into uh, hypnosis or something like that to retrieve it? Well, in truth, uh, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't. In fact, when he – what happened – was they were so upset they weren't taken to a regular craft. All the small craft were taken to a massive craft where uh, Dale and all the other people said it, 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 it. everybody is so nervous and so upset that it's like an admiral coming on board a ship and that nothing better go wrong tonight. So mm -hmm. what happened is two of the big shots from what I call mid-level management showed up. <laughs> Forget the alien. Because they're not even in charge. There's seven of the alien, the seven flavors of the alien I keep talking about, from Bigfoot to the little guy. Yes. All standing in front of the big guy, sitting in front of the big chair. Mm -hmm. And he's not happy at all. And Dale's standing in front of him. And he looks at Dale and he says, why did he do this? He said, your image and all the information about what happened that they knew came out instantly, mentally. And he said, I realized at that point you had done something to cause this whole abduction. And I told him I didn't know. The guy went ballistic. He was so angry. And uh, the Nordic got scared. Everybody was shaking. And the Nordic walked over to Dale. Dale stands about 6'2". The Nordic stands about 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, He's very large. And he squats down a little bit, puts his eyes right next to Dale's, face to face, puts his hands on both sides of Dale's face, and he looks deep into his eyes, and he looks back at the guy, big guy sitting in the chair, and he says, he's telling the truth. And the guy cooled off. The next what thing happened, Dale, was, to... Dale was completely oblivious to what was going on. He said, why did you not tell me? I said, because you would have told them everything. Oh, yeah. He said, well, of course I would have. And I said, that's why you weren't told anything, Dale. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want them to know. Oh, right. You're an abductee. You guys talk like little – you're like little magpies. You're just, you'll tell them everything in the world. That you, if I told you stuff, you'd tell them. Well, of course right. I would. And I said, that's why you can't know. I said, I tell you things I want them to know. Yes. So when you blabber mouth to them, it's something I want them to know. I want to see the, the reaction to that and so on. Now, the, the guy sitting in the chair or the whatever he was that you refer to, what did he look like? I can tell you, but I have to kill myself. Oh, jeez. <laughs> then don't tell us. Now, the reason, I, the reason I'm joking with you there is because the reason there, there's certain – remember I told you about police work, we keep certain information away from people? Yes. 
I've already had a number of people say, oh, yeah, me too. I was there in the mass abduction. I know all about it. Great. You can start describing the walls. You can describe the rooms. You can describe the shapes. You can describe the size. You can describe everything. Not the stuff I've written, but the stuff that I have not written. Ah. Uh, and they're right. always wrong. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they're testing because other they're people. making it up. It's a me yeah. too thing. They want to get in on the act. I don't know why people feel they need to do. I was sitting there at the at the council table of the galactic leaders, and there aren't any. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, and it there really were no wasn't... white long robes, big big bearded guys. No, forget that. Right. It Only in the movie. Anything you imagine. Right. People keep trying to play, play these anthropomorphic games and apply our standards and our shape and our looks and our values to them and say, see how stupid we are. They are a lot smarter. The little guy's got an IQ of 80. He's a lot <laughs> smarter than you are. You need medication. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, thanks a lot. He's made that way on purpose. Some of the entities are extremely intelligent. They're made that way on purpose. That's the point. They have specific tasks in the hive that is to be done. So they returned Dale all in one piece, and he was in good condition, right? He didn't have any problems. Yeah, he came back, and he didn't know what was going on. His fingernails started growing very rapidly, and he said, when I have to trim my fingernails twice a day, there's a problem. I said, if you're traveling at a relativistic speed, that might make your fingernails grow longer. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I said, have a seat. And he blurted everything out. I found out everything from him. And all the other eight people were there and other people who were in the, on the craft as well. So I separated everybody so that no one could communicate with anyone. And I worked with every one of those people independently. And they all gave the same exact story. So that's that's a great corroboration of everything that happened, and it's Huge. again it gives you a lot more information about what they're up to. So uh, again, why? Let me just ask you this: Why did they take those eight people? Why those people? Okay, the reason is because I set them up, I baited them. I, are you familiar with the concept of the Manchurian Candidate? Yes. Okay, I created a Manchurian candidate out of the contactee. I asked a lady who was a contactee. I didn't want to use an abductee because people say, you use abductees because they have negative experiences and that. No, that's not the reason. So I used a contactee who favors these aliens. And I said, I need I need the, you to volunteer for a program, if you will. And I can't tell you anything about it, and nothing can be known. And she said, you have probably lost hundreds of thousands of dollars in therapy and time alone working with us. You do all of it for free. It's a philanthropic effort. That that is true. She said, based on that alone, my answer is absolutely yes. Mm -hmm. She's, what are we going to do? And I said, we're going to do some closed eye processing. What's that? Close your eyes. And then she fell over into a deep, deep sleep. And at that point, I programmed her with a memory that was not her own. I gave her the memory of someone I had already worked with before that uh, I felt had damning information. In other words, he saw something or heard things he should not have heard and seen. And I'm, I'm a, I, I used to work in the intelligence business. If we're sitting down at dinner to having a good time, and all of a sudden you blurt out all kinds of secret information about uh, the CIA stuff that I knew about, you're in a lot of trouble. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely. You're going to be on a, on a watch list for the next 10 years because how could <laughs> you possibly know about our secret operations? You That's couldn't. Right. Right. So I programmed this information in her. I install amnesia on the front side of it so that she would not give it away because they, they're going to they're look at you instantly and find out all your information. They're going to do mm-hmm. that. 
So I installed right. amnesia on the front side so that she wouldn't know. And I installed amnesia on the back side that she, so she wouldn't be able to give them any information about it if they primed her after the fact. So she goes in. Th- th- this is before the mass abduction. She gets abducted about every month or two. And uh, she's in Jacksonville, Florida. And she gets abducted. And she tells me about it. She tells me some strange things about the strange dream. I work with her to find out it's an abduction, and it's what happened that I thought would. The problem is she made a mistake. Uh, I set the memory to go off 20 inches in front of him, the entity, Mm -hmm. the alien. Right. Well, it goes off like clockwork. She goes from a stupor of I don't know anything. I can't figure out what's going on. I'm just a daze that you're in. To instantly, she's wide awake, and it stunned him. And she says, Daryl knows what you're doing. <laughs> well, that was not a good thing to say. Oh. Uh, he knew exactly who Daryl was. And he, and at that point, they abducted her, Dale, and all the other. You abduct Dale because he's my senior investigator. If you want to know what I'm doing, yeah, you get him. Dale. Because he, right. he theoretically would know. Wrong. So I'm not mm-hmm. going to give that information to him. So when they found out the information that was so damning to them, I di- and I didn't know if it was going to work or not, and maybe the information is not accurate. Maybe it's a lie. Maybe it's – I don't know. Until we do this, we don't know. Well, it apparently was damning, and it worked, and they picked up eight of our people in two states and several cities on two different occasions, December 8th and December 11th, three days apart, in a double mass abduction of these eight people. And, wow. uh I mean to tell you, the big boys were not happy, not happy at all. They felt for, they got hoodwinked. Okay, so they didn't like that. Okay, well, yes, that's understandable. <laughs> they, they're used to being top dog and being in control of all of this. Let me ask you this question, Daryl, because this comes up over and over again with our audience. This lady that gets abducted like every other month, why her? Why was she being taken all the time? <laughs> Because, number one, she's a contactee, and uh, she's very malleable, very pliable, and uh, she's also uh, – there are reasons they take you. It's not just because they want to abduct somebody. There are actual reasons they want to uh, to uh, pick up people, uh, and some of the reasons are uh, they like to know what's going on with other abductees and contactees. What would be the best way to do that? <clears throat> Right. Pick up someone that's in contact with a lot of other abductees and contactees. Will they blabbermouth on everybody? Of course they will. They'll sing like magpies. And you mentioned something that I think is a really important thing, which is that they're malleable. They they're are. pliable. And so that might be what I, somebody once said to me, Patricia, they're never going to pick you up because you would be such a pain in their ass. It's like you, you would just be relentless. They're never going to take you. So I said, good. <laughs> but now you're. Well, realistically, you're they, they do, they do take, they do take people that are hardheads. Uh, they do. They, there are, we do have abductees and, and contactees who are uh, pretty tough minded but uh, pretty much they usually when they get you, they, they get you when you're young, when you're a child, and that's where they, they work the programming on you. There are three, three programs they run on everybody. One, if you do one, you become a contactee. In other words, you agree to the programming. If right. you don't agree to the programming, you become an abductee. It's, that's still a program. Right. People don't understand that. It still is a program. Yeah. Number three, and this is the, um, one of the hardest ones to identify, and I've, I've got cases of it, are people who are, I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I've got missing time. I've got all these things, and I have no idea what happened. None. And I've worked with people like this before. They have incredible memory of what went on. But you have to uh, – they, they have been they, – they're very susceptible to the suggestions you will not remember. And they don't. But the problem is your body does remember. And I like finding out what your body actually knows. That's a good thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you do have cellular memory. 
of these types of events. So now, do you find hypnosis to be effective as a way of retrieving information? Uh, I've had a dozen people write me that in the last several days. Uh, they asked, you know, have you ever had hypnosis for your memory stuff? And I said, no. I said, why not? I said, I work on your brain. You don't work on mine. Mm-hmm. And one of them's a hypnotist. They said, what do you mean? I said, let me explain some things to you. This is going to sting. They said, okay. And I said, a hypnotherapist is not a therapist. He's a hypnotist. The word therapist is stuck on the end of it. You're not a therapist. You're a hypnotist. And some of the things you'll learn in your hypnosis skills are therapeutic type things that you hope works. You're not a therapist. You really don't know. You just hypnotize people and Whatever works, works, and that's it. I said, the reason I don't use people like that for my, for me is because, first of all, you don't know how the alien thinks. You have not been in his headspace. I have. I know what he thinks. I know how he functions. I know what he's going to do. I have a pretty good idea about that. And I want... Uh, I want uh, a person that works with me, they're going to have to have the skills that I do. I said, the reason, I said, you're a hypnotist. If somebody comes to you with an abduction event or something like that, what are you going to do? They said, well, we would uh, we'd hypnotize them. I said, why do you think that is? They said, well, because that's our skill. I said, yeah. I said basically, you see people as hammers, uh, as nails, and you're the hammer. That's the only skill you've got, so that's all you use. I said, do you realize that that if you if you're really skilled at certain other things, that you can actually pull memory out of people without hypnosis? What? That's impossible. I said, no, it's impossible to you because you don't know anything else. I understand your problem. I I get it. Uh, I said, so I, I said you're not you're missing my whole point. I said you need to have the, the, to answer your question. Is somebody you will never work with me simply be, because uh, I don't want someone, especially unskilled. I said and another thing. I said when you hypnotize somebody, how do you know you actually have memory? Well, because they're saying things. I said because somebody says. I said I can hypnotize people, make them think that they're Elvis Presley. I assure you, he did not reincarnate on the spot in their body. And they became Elvis Presley. It's called stage hypnosis. So that's not you, re- that's not memory. So it's you're recall. Able get, you're able to get people to recall their memories even without having to use hypnosis. You're able to do that, yeah, which there, is there are different ways of doing that. So I think the great. last bullet you want fired at your case is that you were hypnotized because if if you're hypnotized from the very beginning, let's say you got a great case, a really great case. The worst thing you can do is go out and get hypnotized. Why? Well, first of all, it's like inviting some of these people, in my opinion, your case is like uh, a, a T-Rex found underground, and it's, in, it's intact. It's worth, uh, it's worth a fortune, so to speak. Not money-wise, but, but in value. And you're going to go invite your best friend who's got a backhoe to come dig up your T-Rex? That's got to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What do you going to tear the T Rex all apart? Right, but what, because what he do you doesn't recommend? know how to remove a T Rex from the ground. You get go get anthropologists and, and paleontologists to do this sort of thing. You don't get your best friend who's good with a backhoe to do it. Right, but then where do people go for this? Because I I've had people in, in our audience that have contacted PK and I and said, you know, where do I go? I think I've been abducted, but who do I turn to to retrieve these memories? So what advice do you have for them? My advice to them is if if, if you if if you don't care about your case, go ahead and get hypnotized first and find out what happened, and hopefully you'll 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 find out your information. But if you decide that the case is valuable, really cool and everything, the first bullet fired at your case is going to be you got hypnotized by a hypnotist, and they made you believe every bit of that stuff. Not one word of it's true. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. That's the first bullet that's going to be fired. 
So the real question to me is, when would you use hypnosis, Daryl, or a memory recovery technique? Specifically, when I use hypnosis is at the end of the case. Why? Because when I when I when I'm going after the I'm going after details at that point. In other words, how do I know ultimately? Because the question is going to be asked of me. How do I know that you're not lying or, or fabricating or making this up or you're hallucinating or the aliens put that in your head? How do I know that? Right. Well, if you don't I know do. anything about the alien, you can't answer those questions at all because you don't know what the alien thinks. In fact, if you think they're from a zeta reticuli and they're doing all kinds of fun stuff, you're already stuck in that rut to begin with. they got to be from zeta reticuli because they said so. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the the thing I'm looking for in in the at the end of your event, I'm going to go after weather conditions and all kinds of things that only you would know if you were in the event. Then I'm going to go back and check all that information against weather records and so on and so on, other witnesses and so on. If that stands the test, you've got a really solid case. So, can people contact you for help with this? And how would they contact you? You can go to alienhunter.org and look at our website there. I've actually got two of them. If you click on the other one, it's alienhunterthemovie.org. And you can have a lot of fun looking at those things. And uh, if you want to contact me personally, just click on Alien Hunter. Uh, it's, it says a button down there. It says contact the Alien Hunter. You just click on it. It automatically emails me. If I don't write you back within the week, usually within the same day or so if I'm not busy doing something, uh, then if I don't contact you within a week, email me again because I obviously didn't get the email. If I get the email, you'll get an email back. Okay, because this, I mean, a lot of people just don't know where to turn. So it's important that they're able to get a hold of you and develop some type of plan to try to understand what happened if they do have a a case of value, and then at what point do you start to use hypnosis or any type of memory retrieval so that they can get to the bottom of what did happen with them? So so you're a great resource, Daryl, for people like this who just don't know where to go. Well, I've been through through what they're going through. I already already get it. So I'm very sympathetic. that's, That's wonderful. But I don't want them destroying their case either. Well, yes, and I know Dr. Jacobs was writing a book about the proper hypnosis techniques so that you don't end up implanting memories in people by accident so that it it keeps the case a lot cleaner. I don't know how close he is to finishing that book, but it would be a very helpful thing so that people don't contaminate their memories with with these other types of things. So it's it's a good thing to, to learn, and I know you already know this, so... Because you've been doing this for such a and long those time. Of you, those are the people that would like a lot of information. Uh, I just did a video uh, interview, uh, and I'll send it to everybody. I'll send it to you guys. You can send it to your people if you like. Uh, they charge you for it, but it, but I'll send it for free. Uh, and uh, it a- answers a ton of questions. And uh, I'll send it to you guys tonight so that you'll have it as well. And yeah. you're welcome to send it to your people or put it on your website. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, and it, it will help a lot of people. Well, that's what we're all about here on this show. I mean, we want to help people who are involved in paranormal experiences. They often don't know where to turn. And as everybody knows, there's no big upside to sharing your experiences with the general population because you get shamed, you get accused, you get, you know, it, it's very unpleasant for the most part, even though I see some consciousness rising in another direction about interest in this level for the individual who has gone through an abduction experience, it's, it's often unpleasant on all sides. So it's important to have somebody like you on their team. I I hope I would be of value. And if I can help someone, I surely will. Yes, exactly. Now, do you think that people are being abducted pretty regularly, almost like they, we heard about it a lot more in the 80s, in the 70s, but what about now? Has it has it kind of tapered off, or is it still going strong with people being taken? Well, I, 
I get these wonderful emails from people, or I'll, I'll somebody will send me a message. I have I've been to the Galactic Council, and they have notified me that alien abductions are stopping as of now, or have been stopped for the last year. And I'll laugh and I'll say, "Well, you better tell our people because uh, they're getting hammered pretty good." Oh no! And uh, it just it just oh. they, they they don't know what to say. Well, that's. That's a different. That must be a different group of aliens, and they're just not obeying the rules. And I said, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not one to pick on people. I just think that your information is way off track. So, way so off. this has not stopped. This has not abated in any way. It just continues on as it always has. It, no, it's not going to stop until that little one inch. Measurement on the on the uh, uh, the uh, one inch measurement that I mentioned that yes, Dale that saw track. on that giant map that yes. was the last hundred years and we don't know whether that hundred years is already up or whether it's not up or whether it's just started we don't know what it is we don't know what level it is but uh, the important thing and this is consistent by the way with other people that I've talked to as well. They know they're not going to win. They're already at that stage of the game. I mean, it's like being in a war. At some point, you know you're not going to win. You're going to have to cut your losses. So whatever is going on is going to uh, it, it's going to be. Uh, um, it, they know they're not they're not going to win the show, so to speak. It's it's just they know that. Well, I guess that's good news. And I think that's 100% true. I think uh, I think that uh, they know that, and I think that little piece of tape, so to speak, that one-inch last part shows the fact. And, of course, Dale was stunned when he heard that, like you think the program's going to last forever or do whatever. But the alien, as far as they're concerned, when that, that little section of time is finished, that's it. They're done. It's all over. Everything is finished. Now, what does that mean? In my opinion, it means that there's another program going to start. In fact, I'll tell your audience something they probably don't know and probably will never believe, because if you're if you're busy listening to other TV shows and things like that, you're going to hear a totally different story. I'm going to give you the great scoop because I've got nothing to gain from it. Okay, the great scoop to, uh, is. They, Two minutes left, so let's hear it. Abductions, pro- abductions probably have not been going on for no more than uh, a couple hundred years at the most. Wow. The alien hasn't been here forever. Mm-hmm. Their bosses have, but the alien is just a program. And, of course, you watch shows on TV. The aliens have been here for 60 million thousand years. And they don't, no, they actually haven't. In fact, I challenge you to find them all over history. You won't, you won't find them. And it, you, you back several hundred years at the most. Wow. You'll find sm- a smidgen of a piece of them or something like an, I've got an alien on an amulet found in Turkey probably 3,000 years ago. That's just one being. He's not abducting anyone. In fact, he's holding hands with a giant. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, there's so Gives much. Gives you an idea that, that there might be on the same team. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Well, Daryl, once again, the time just goes so fast when you're on the show, and there's just never enough time to cover everything. But we so appreciate you joining us tonight. I know our audience is thrilled that you come back again and, and share all this very important information. So we're going to look for more for from you and we're going to have you back again because I know I'm going to be hearing about it if I don't. So a pleasure. Totally, Daryl. Thank you so much. Next week, everybody will be back with another guest. We're talking about Jesse James and the Templar treasure. I have no idea how those two are connected, but we're going to find <laughs> out. So until then, everybody, we'll see you on the side. Thank you, Daryl. All the Thank best you. to you. Good to see you guys again. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for another radio adventure with Supernatural.